I'm Steven. I'm Tana. And I'm Jackson. And we did the math of swimming. All right. So when we were thinking of a topic, we really couldn't decide for a really long time. So we thought we'll just open up a book and point to a random word, and we'll just do it on that. But that word was armadillos, and we don't know what calculus goes into armadillos. So we just chose swimming. Um, so we chose it because all three of us are swimming, are swimmers. So that just makes sense, I guess. And um, we just wanted to know how we could like swim more efficiently and get into like specifics about our sport. So some of the history of swimming is it was first introduced in the Olympics in 1896. The butterfly was introduced in 1956, and the strokes have changed drastically. Like the butterfly started off with a breaststroke kick that was modified. Um, goggles were introduced in 1976. They were called clear view swimming glasses. They are clear. Um, swimming attire has also changed. You can see here that guys started out by wearing speedos, and then they're now wearing full body suits. No, those are banned. Yeah, those are banned. They have to be both. And strokes have changed. There's no goggles. It's heads up. Just different things have changed. Um, the, a typical high school swimming pool is 25 yards long and has six or eight lay or lanes. Um, individual races are normally 50 yards to 500 yards, and relays are 200 or 400 yards. And if you swim club or in college, um, the yards vary. Okay, um, we used integration to uh, find displacement on a 2D frame, so looking at the pool from the side. And uh, we were trying to find uh, which one of our starts was closest to zero displacement. Um, now, integration advancements were in the 17th century by Newton and Leibniz. Uh, they made their findings based on the fun fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, and I believe they also made the fundamental theorem of calculus. Since we didn't have a function, though, uh, we used a different method. We used Raymond sums. Um, Raymond sums are an approximation of an integral. Uh, they were a way for mathematicians of Bernard Raymond's time to figure out the area under a curve accurately. Um, there are three types of integrals, but we only use the left and the right ones. And so, you know, left we did a square with the left endpoint being the height, and with the right we just did the exact same thing with the height being the right. I believe we already described this, but I'll do it again. Uh, we were looking for the zero displacement in a start and see which one of us had the best start. Now, traditionally, we'd all dolphin kick after we hit the water, but for the point of this experiment, we didn't to try and get better data. So here are just examples of each of our start, if Jackson will play the videos for us. I wasn't trained in this. There you go. This is Jackson's site. Yeah, so you can see here, as it'll come back, it's a nice kind of sine wave. So it was relatively easy to figure out. You can just hear the little. Anyway, like, uh, next slide. Yep. And then this will be Tanis. Okay, so we went home and then wrote this on a big whiteboard that we could give you pictures and see what it was doing. So this would be Jackson's graph, so to say. And then these slides forward. Here's the math. Now, this is the only slide that we actually showed the math on. The rest is just kind of hidden. We did it in the background. Um, yeah, so you can see above the water, below the water, and, you know, for both left and right. Um, again, above and below, left and right. We have negative on hers instead of positive on Jackson's. So she was under the water longer. You can see here. No. <laughs> okay, and then on mine, again, we did left and right. You can see here, though, that my numbers are a little closer to zero than either of the before. So, of course, 
sadly to say, I am the winner. <laughs> but if we move forward, do you want to pre -spell? Um, Next, we wanted to see how efficient and how fast our 200 freestyle races. Uh, this is a distance between sprinting and swimming distance for high school, so it's hard to pace it. Uh, we asked a couple of our some some teams, <laughs> swimmers, <laughs> Eric and Dylan, to be our test subjects. So we had them swim three different ways. Um, you, so we used velocity, which is distance over time. And after that, we simply solved the acceleration of the boys and then kinetic energy that they had. Yeah. So here's an example of how you can swim two different races. I'm in this lane, and there's a girl right here who started out a lot faster. You can see that she's pulling ahead. It's kind of a long So you can see right here, this is right after the 100. I'm starting to catch up and start starting faster. Sorry about the video. <laughs> we're even right now because we were swimming at different paces. And then right here, you can see that she was just super tired. And then the constant is starting to pull forward. I don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's um, yeah. In 1666, Newton described velocity for the first time in his three laws of motion. He described that change in velocity is what determines whether or not an object changes motion. Newton describes a change in velocity over time as acceleration. And kinetic energy was first introduced by Rockford Lebanese, when he described kinetic energy as the living force. Kinetic energy was defined as the energy of a moving object by the Greeks around 347 BC. Leibniz determined that the energy a moving object obtained was proportionate to what it was capable of accomplishing. So like if you drop something off of a cliff into water, the farther it drops, the further underwater it goes. That's all that that's really saying. All right, and then this is the 200 yards, like the swims that we had them do, the splits that they got, their final times, and the different ways that we had them swimming. So if you look at Dylan's splits, like his total times are about all the same, but his splits are all like very different. That's because we had him swim different styles for it, like sprinting the last half. Um, keeping a pace. Yeah, keeping a pace or like trying to sprint in the beginning. I think we have them like all screwed up, but no, they're good. Nope. Anyway, so like when he sprinted the last half, his you can sort of see like by the times what was going on, but it's kind of hard to tell. It's a little easier to tell with Dylan, so with Eric, excuse me. But so we decided to put it into velocities, so you can see the different velocities at different times. So you know this is all in um, yards per second. So you can see that Dylan's like slow. Generally, throughout the thing, he slowly like slows down throughout the way, but it's still kind of hard to see. So we put it into acceleration, and now it's just, it's really easy because you can see once it's negative, that's him slowing down. And if it becomes positive, that's him speeding up. So it's just so much easier. So you can sort of see when Dylan was supposed to sprint the last half, he, well, he didn't really speed up. He kept constant at that time. And when he was supposed to keep constant throughout the thing, he sort of slows down a little bit, which is pretty much what we were expecting. And when he was supposed to sprint the entire thing, he starts off really quickly, and then just very quickly starts to go down. Next we did kinetic energy. We got this function from our physics teacher. So we just plugged in his velocity with their weights in kilograms. And you can see that as time went on, they lost more and more energy because they were going slower or the same speed. But they should be using more energy towards the end. 
Okay, so then we had to find other applications of math because you know, we want a good grade. And uh, <laughs> um, so you can you can use these things for all sorts of different things. Um, you can find areas under a curve. You can find volume of say a pool or something. Um, you can do aircraft stuff. You can find lift, drag, acceleration, velocity, all that jazz. Um, yeah, other sports, people, we're all just full of math. And I think that's the end of the slideshow, yeah.